the river in Valencia, the one that crosses the city and has been kind of the backbone of the city. The city was founded by the Romans next to the river because of being in a fertile area. But in the 50s, there was a dramatic flood and the city was heavily damaged and, and many people died and it was, it, it was a big drama. So uh, how the authority respond, it was in a very top-down and engineer way as things were done in the 60s. So the river was completely deviated five kilometers south. And what happened with the old riverbed, with the, 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 where the, the river used to be, is that it, 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 it happened to be a sort of a backyard, a no man land. And for many decades, it was a place to play soccer, like to have fun, there were informal housing, there was slums, it was, there was a place for cattle. And during the 70s, there was the proposal of using this as a highway, to build a highway in this sort of modernist idea of the cities that was like very much focusing on cars and again on engineering. But uh, you know that in Spain we had a dictatorship till 1975. So when democracy came and when all the democracy was also an opening for all the kind of hidden political uh, discussions that were already happening. And during the 70s, already at the end of the, of the dictatorship, neighborhood associations were very important. And particularly in Valencia, which is a city that was getting a lot of uh, new population from the countryside that was coming to the city for new opportunities. And neighborhood association and neighborhoods in par neighbors in particular were, uh, were very vocal about not wanting to have a highway in the riverbed. So there were there was read, like there were writings, there were op-eds, there were demonstrations, trying to reclaiming the riverbed as a green space. So it was this this common lemma that people were saying, we want it public, we want it green, and. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, the newly elected democratic government, the first democratic local government in Valencia, was intelligent enough to respond to that, but not with grand ideas, but more with a grounded response. And what they did was basically catch the message from the citizens and transform it in a great public space. But also it was done gradually. Instead of transforming it at once, it was done per segments and per fragments. So there was, they commissioned a nice master plans designed by Ricardo Bofill, but because uh, the government was quite, not very affluent, I mean, at that moment, it was, resources were not, they were not, they, they, they didn't have a lot of money actually to invest and to transform it as a whole. Funnily enough, it was done by segments and some departments took care of different segments. So now that we have uh, sections that are much more designed in terms of landscaping, others, funny enough, the ones that were managed by the agricultural, the forest department are more like a forest. Others are like hosting a lot of uh, sports facilities and that also created a sort of an organic public space. And nowadays, if we think it, see it with perspective, uh, it is probably the best public space we have in town. Probably one of the best is Europe. It connects every single neighborhood in the, in the city. But I guess the main learning here is that, on the one hand, was the possibility of taking advantage of a unique opportunity. There is no city in the world that could buy land, not even in China, not even in Emirates, that could buy five kilometers, uh, a stripe of five kilometers long in the middle of the city. That's not financially possible. So there was this unique opportunity of having an outdated infrastructure that could be reused in a smart way. And also, I think it was the, the intelligence of responding to a clear citizen's demand in a common sense way, nothing super expensive, nothing so special, but those projects get special with everyday life.